हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे आई टॉक अबाउट ईसीजी पार्ट टू एज यू नो आई डिड ए लेक्चर प्रीवियसली रिगार्डिंग ईसीजी व्हिच वाज इंक्लूड इन द ईसीजी पार्ट वन आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू हैव सीन दैट लेक्चर इफ एनी वन ऑफ यू हैव नॉट सीन यू कैन सी दैट लेक्चर इन यूट्यूब एज ऑफ नाउ विल कॉन्टिन्यू विद द प्रीवियस लेक्चर सो as as i told you continuation to part 1 now we talk about ecg finding of potassium hyperkalemia so this is normal recording this is the t wave so when hyperkalemia start occurring the first finding is tall t wave the tall t wave so hyperkalemia this is the first finding after that if more hyperkalemia occurs there is a prolonged pr interval this is the pr interval this is prolonged and as you know prolonged pr interval is also known as first degree hard block that means a pr interval is more than 0.20 second that is first degree heart block so second finding what we see is pr interval along more than 0.20 second after that p disappears the p wave has disappeared and this is known as atrial arrest as you know very well the p wave is produced due to atrial contraction so what the third finding is p disappears p wave disappear so call atrial arrest finally wide qrs so call sine wave so the finally is wide qrs so called sine wave this is what all you have to remember in hyperkalemia so in hyperkalemia tall t wave prolonged pr interval p disappear and sine wave the four keywords are t wave prolonged pr then p disappear and sine wave there are four keywords what you have to remember for hyperkalemia Then we move on to hypokalemia. So patient come to us, and this is his normal ECG, T wave. So once the hypokalemia start, hypokalemia. The first finding is T become short and it. prominent u wave appears point to be noted the t wave height has decrease and in the advanced stages what happens in the advanced stages number 1 u wave appears this the u wave is there then t disappear just see there is no t wave t t wave has completely disappeared second finding is t disappear third there is prolonged pr interval prolonged pr interval that is more than 0.20 second point to be noted the prolonged pr interval is was also seen in hyperkalemia also and this prolonged qt interval this is qt interval this was the pr interval prolonged qt interval that is more than 0.44 second prolonged qt interval is the most important finding you may forget any other finding i don't mind but you don't have to forget prolonged qt interval okay and finally there's some sagging of st segment st s 
segue. Okay, so a quick recap of the uh, hypokalemia. You appear, T disappear, prolonged PR, prolonged QT, and sagging of ST. So there are five keywords. So entire potassium you can revise only in seven seconds. <coughs> Tall T wave, prolonged PR, P disappear, sine wave, U appear, T disappear, prolonged PR, prolonged QT, and ST sagging. Potassium is a very, very important question for the exam point of view. So now we talk about digoxin. Right now, sup suppose I'm sitting in my OPD, a patient come, he's in congestive heart failure. I do his heart recording and I get a recording like this. It's a normal recording. And I prescribe him the joxin, one tablet per day. Remember, when he comes to me right now, he has Paul complained of dyspnea on exertion. He has swelling in the feet. He has fatigue, malaise and all this thing. That means he's in congestive heart failure. So I prescribe the joxin. I ask him to come after one month. When he come to me after one month, I say, how, how are you? He says, I'm perfectly all right, doctor. My breathlessness is reduced, swelling is reduced. I'm much more comfortable. Now, if I do recording, remember, as a clinician, I can judge. He has been adequately digitalized, and that's why he got a lot of benefit. Now, after one month, I do his recording. I get recording like this. What I'm getting is there is ST segment is depressed. Downside, downward arrow is depression. So there is ST segment is depressed. But from ages, it is being called as reverse hockey stick sign. Reverse hockey stick sign. Why? Hockey sticks is like this. And it is like this. It is also known as reverse check mark. When you see it like this, it's a reverse check mark sign. So either they will talk about reverse hockey stick sign, which is more commonly asked, or they will talk about reverse check mark sign. That means they are talking about digoxin. So the summary of digoxin is only in one word. The so entire digoxin is summarized in one word, that is reverse. So digoxin is equal to reverse hockey stick sign so now we talk about excess deviation this one topic is not known to most of students so we'll spend a lot of time in learning the basic fundamental what do you mean by excess deviation right so let's take a lead this is This is L1, this is AVF. Point to note it, here the R wave is upward and R wave, that means we have upward slope. Anything up is positive, anything down is negative. So let's learn the basic concept about the axis deviation. So we plot like this. This is L1. This is AVF. This is L1, AVF. And this is the positive side of L1. This is the negative side of L1. Negative, positive. This is the positive of AVF. This is negative of AVF. Okay. Point to note it. The AVF positive is down and AVF negative is upside. Now, let's see how many small squares are there. One, two, three, four, five. So there are five plus in L1. Remember, anything up is positive. So five plus in one, two, three, four, five. This 
and in AVF, how many small square? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, five. One, two, three, four, five. This is. So now, if you plot a graph, so what you are getting? We are getting graph like this thing. So what is the angle here? This is 45. Plus 45. So here in this recording, we are getting plus 45. Okay. Let's take one more recording. This is the L1. And AVF is same, like this. So if you see how many small square is L1? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we are getting, remember, anything down is negative. This is L1. So we have 5 negative. And negative of L1 is on the left side. So what we get is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this thing. But this is same. AVF is same. Now the angle will be, now the angle will be like this. From here. Now it is 135. Agreed? Let's take one more recording. We are getting in AVF. This is AVF. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But L1 is positive. L1 is this one, positive, AVF is negative. So what we get? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative. So what we get? We get the angle like this. So now we are getting minus 45. And if both are negative, this and this, what you will get? Here and you'll get one, two, three, four, five. So you will get an angle like this. So this will be extreme negative. So it will be the minus 135. It is just to make you understand. I am quite sure in the first instances, you may not be able to understand clearly. You can watch this video again after the lecture, but do you do we need uh, to remember all these calculations not at all you are not uh, you if you remember fine if you don't remember don't worry but what you got to remember what is normal axis normal axis is minus 32 plus 90 that means this is the minus 30 minus 30 and this is the 90 this is the normal record excess more normal excess minus 30 to 90 but again I tell you some of the books they write 0 to 110 also some books write minus 30 to 100 also there's some variation is there in the different book but by and large minus 30 to 90 is the normal excess and anything below that is left and anything uh, here is right axis this is right axis deviation and this is left axis deviation this again if you remember fine if not now what you have to remember what you remember for all the practical purpose is following what are the causes of left axis deviation and what are the causes of right axis deviation Causes of left axis deviation, right axis deviation. Left ventricle hypertrophy. It is right ventricle hypertrophy. Left bundle branch block right bundle branch block third then we talk about ASD septum primum ASD septum secundum 
लेफ्ट एंटीरियर हैवी ब्लॉक लेफ्ट पोस्टीरियर हैमी ब्लॉक राइट न्यूमोथोरेक्स लेफ्ट न्यूमोथोरेक्स पीटी सेंड फॉर न्यूमोथोरेक्स रिटर्न ओके नाउ स्टॉप एस फॉर एस लेफ्ट लेफ्ट वेंटिकल राइट वेंटिकल ओके लेफ्ट बंडल राइट बंडल ओके बट दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एग्जाम क्वेश्चन रिमेंबर ए एस डी विद प्राइमरी प्राइमरी मोर सेकेंडम यू कैन डिफ्रेंशिएट बाई ई सी जी जस्ट लुक एट एक्सिस इज लेफ्ट एक्सिस इज प्राइम राइट इज सेकेंडम देन द लेफ्ट एंटीरियर हेमी ब्लॉक इज एल ए डी पोस्टीरियर हेमी ब्लॉक इज राइट एक्सिस अबाउट दिस आई टॉक इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ ई सी जी पार्ट थ्री must see that lecture and it is the right pneumothorax which lead to left axis deviation simply if the pneumothorax is acting on the right side pneumothorax it will push the heart to left side and similarly left pleural thorax pneumothorax will push the heart to right side the opposite pressure it will be there so right pneumothorax lead to left axis deviation and the left pneumothorax lead to right axis deviation okay so let's have a quick recap of the all the thing what we read today in just 10 or 15 second so in hyperkalemia tall t wave prolonged pr p disappear sine wave hypokalemia u wave t disappear prolonged pr prolonged qt and st sagging left axis right left ventricular hypertrophy right ventricular hypertrophy left block right ventricular right block primum secundum anterior hem block posterior hem block right pneumothorax and the left pneumothorax thank you very much for watching this video all my previous videos of various topic you can see in our youtube see you for the next lecture of ecg part 3 where i like to discuss arrhythmias and blocks thank you very much